Hello folks, this is Ayatan Anshah from InspireToRise.com and today we are going to talk about the Honor 20 smartphone. So guys, let's first start with an unboxing for the same. This is the official box for the Honor 20. Inside the box, the first thing that you get is the smartphone itself. This is the Sapphire Blue version. And what else do you get on the inside? You get the SIM tray removal pin. You get the 10 volt 4 ampere charger. You get the USB type C cable. You get the type C to 3.5 mm adapter and the 22.5 watt Huawei supercharged charger. And apart from that, there's not too much else inside. Now let's talk about the build and design. At the back, there's the dynamic holographic glass back with several layers of 3D depth effect and it certainly looks good, gets smudges really easily and it's also slightly prone to scratches if you don't take care of the unit. And at the back there are 4 camera sensors and if I talk about the camera module, it's protruding out slightly. So that's one of the big issues about the design of the smartphone and apart from that it does look really beautiful. The sides are metal and the back is all glass so it certainly looks really premium but I kind of dislike the font that they have used for the 48 MP and AI vision which is written on the back. It's just 7.87 mm thin on the right hand side you get the power button and the volume rocker. The power button has a inbuilt fingerprint sensor which is really fast. On the left hand side you get a dual sim tray slot which does not have a micro SD card slot. At the top there's the infrared sensor along with the noise cancellation microphone. At the bottom, there's the USB Type-C port along with the speaker grill. There's no 3.5mm jack over here. Now, if we talk about the display, it has a 6.26-inch LCD IPS display with a hole punch notch. The hole punch is really small over here. It's a Full HD Plus resolution display with 19.5 to 9 aspect ratio. The chin is not really that big and the punch hole is also really small. It's also an option for smart resolution switching which allows you to save your battery power by switching between HD Plus and Full HD Plus modes normally and the phone decides by itself when to switch between those so it saves you quite a lot of battery that way. The phone rocks when it's kept on a flat surface that's one of the issues that it faces. If you talk about the specifications it comes with the Kirin 980 chipset, Mali G7 6 MP10 GPU, 6 GB of RAM, 128 GB of internal storage out of which you get 110 GB. It's a UFS 2.1 storage and it comes with Magic UI 2.0 based on Android Pie. I felt that the experience was good enough. There are dedicated options like Rider Mode etc. There's also the Fortnite bundle option. And I didn't find too many issues with the UI etc. If you don't like it, you can always slap on a custom launcher. That's something which is up to you. But it's still an okay experience at best. It comes with a 3750mAh battery and charges 50% in 24 minutes. Apart from that, it does have support for infrared, AC Wi-Fi, 32-bit, 192kHz audio, Aptex HD audio, USB OTG support, Bluetooth 5.0 and it's quite compact for a 6.26 inch display smartphone. It does have LED notification light beneath the earpiece grill. And it also has a graphene film on the inside to avoid overheating but we will talk about that later on. There's also virtual surround sound support but that thing works only with the earphones. It does have some preloaded applications but those can be uninstalled. The Honor 20 would be available in sapphire blue, night black and Icelandic white colors. The sapphire blue one looks really gorgeous. And if you talk about the benchmark performance, the UFS 2.1 storage is really fast on this one but the Kirin 980 is not as fast as something like the Snapdragon 855 though you can play PUBG with HDR and Ultra settings and I can assure you that the game does not lag whatsoever even at the maximum possible settings and the gameplay was really good. I played for a really long duration of time in order to test whether the smartphone heats up or not and uh, to my certain surprise this smartphone did heat up to a certain degree even in a temperature controlled environment so I played for quite some time period and I also fast forwarded some of the footage in order to show you that what happens if you keep playing for a long period of time so this smartphone went up to 41 degrees when I played it in a room which was at 28 degrees. Now if you talk about the camera for this one it comes with a 48 MP f1.8 main camera with EIS and AIS there is the 16 MP lens which is the ultra wide lens then a 2 MP macro lens and a 2 MP depth lens. So if I talk about the options the camera UI is densely populated there are a lot of options and I personally found this camera quite good for a lot of shots and everything. Video recording is possible but not through the macro sensor and there is no OIS like the Honor 20 Pro. The Honor 20 Pro has a f1.4 aperture. It does not have that. It has a 48MP ultra clarity mode though. 
and it does not have laser autofocus like the Honor 20 Pro. The front camera is a 32 megapixel selfie camera with the f2.0 aperture. 1080p 18 is to 9 videos are possible. It does have gyro EIS on the front camera. It also has slow motion videos at 960 fps at the rate 720p which looked really good. 4K videos at 30 frames per second also looked really good and I think that finally Honor has got their uh, video game right because I felt that the video looked much better than a lot of Honor predecessors. And if I talk about the image quality, the camera is really superlative. And this time around, I felt that they have done a great job with the camera. The images were good, but there is no Cam2 API support, so it's limited and Gcam might be really tough to get working on this one. The 48 MP ultra clarity mode clicks some really good photos. But if I talk about the front camera video, which is limited at 1080p, I didn't feel that it was that good. The front camera clicks good 32 MP selfies, but the portrait mode definitely needs a little bit more of work as edge detection is not that good. But the macro camera does come in handy a lot of times and it has a 4cm fixed focus distance which allows you to get some really interesting shots. I felt that the camera module on this one is definitely great for the price and it also has really fast face unlock. The fingerprint sensor on the right hand side is really fast and I guess this is the best position for a fingerprint sensor because you can instantly unlock your phone with your thumb. The whole build and finish felt solid and if I talk about the pricing this device must be around 35 to 38 thousand rupees in India and it does have a lot of good features but the problem here is that maybe Huawei and Honor will have a tough time later on in the future and now let's do a sound check. The sound was loud and clear, it's not a stereo speaker setup but still good enough. The battery life easily lasts you throughout the day if you are a normal to average user. For a heavy user, you might have to charge by the evening. For a price of around 35 to 38 thousand rupees, I guess it's a great smartphone for those people who want a nice camera. But things are not really looking rosy for Huawei right now worldwide and maybe Google app support might drop in the near future. But still, there's still hope and it's a great device by Honor. So I feel that it's nice one for the time being. Maybe future Android updates would come or would not come, but still it's a great device to invest in right now. So guys, this was it for this video. In case you like this one, don't forget to smash the thumbs up button and do subscribe to Inspire to Rise for more awesome tech videos like this one. And guys, no matter what you do, stay inspired to rise.